When the train pulled in, I walked through the uh, day coach, and I found there was just a half of one seat vacant, and a man was sleeping on the other half. So I sat down there. I was very much exercised in my soul. I felt there must have been some reason why God had allowed me to miss that train. I believed implicitly, as I still believe, that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. And so I felt that he had someone on that train with whom he wished me to speak. I wondered if it could be the sleeping man beside me. I say sleeping, but the fact is that he roused himself just as I sat down. And he greeted me, and uh, we exchanged a few words, and then were silent for a time. And finally, he woke completely up, and we began to talk together. And all the time I was praying, Lord, if thou hast something for this man, may I not miss the opportunity, but give me just the right message for him. Finally, as we talked along, I put the question straight to him. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? He roused himself up and uh, said to me, it's a remarkable thing that you should ask me that question. He said, you know, sir, I've been so anxious about this matter of salvation for some days that I've been working in a lumber mill down in the southern part of the state, and uh, some folks were having revival meetings nearby, and I went over to the services, and uh, I was quite impressed by the preaching and uh, felt that I was a sinner and needed a savior. And night after night, I went out to the mourner's bench, but somewhere or another, I couldn't seem to get anything clear. You know, as I dropped off to sleep in the train tonight, I was wishing I could talk with someone who could make the way of salvation plain. Well, of course, it was a delight to take out my Bible and turn from passage to passage and show that young man just how he might find peace with God. And uh, finally, as we turn to some of the great salvation verses of the New Testament, the light broke upon his soul, and he said, Oh, I see it. Yes, Christ died for me. And if I trust him as my Savior, then uh, the matter is settled. I said, Yes, that's it. Well, he said, I do trust him. I can take him now. And we bowed our heads together, and he thanked God for his saving grace, and I thanked him for giving me the privilege of being his messenger to that earnest young man. We talked together for perhaps an hour or so, and then he came to the place where he was to leave the train. I bade him goodbye and went on my journey northward. For two or three years after that, I heard from him every little while, and it was delightful to see how he seemed to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I telling you this story? Well, just for this reason. I'm wondering if it might not reach someone who, like that young man, is asking, how may I be saved? I want you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is deeply interested in you. He's longing to see you saved. And he says, him that cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast out. And if you'll but come to him in all simplicity and trust him now as your Savior, you too may say, thank God, I know now that Christ died for me.